everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint a snow covered forest scene. So let's do it. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper taped down with painter's tape onto a piece of cardboard. I have my Winsor Newton common watercolors. I have a Princeton snap brush in a size 16 and I'll probably be using my size six or maybe four later. My water and my paper towel and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna be painting a winter forest scene. This is something I've painted many times. I did it, I remember when I was a kid with acrylic paints, so it's fairly easy. And the first thing you're gonna do is wet your brush and you're gonna take a nice dark blue. I'm gonna use my indigo. Just gonna mix it with whatever I have on my palette here. And I'm just going to create kind of like the horizon line of like the hills of where maybe the snow is gonna end and the background. So I'm just gonna wet everything from here up. like so for the nighttime sky. Okay. And we will darken it up. Okie dokies. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with some more of the indigo and I'm just gonna darken, especially right at the top. Just blend it down. Like so. And always darker towards the top. Okay. Now I'm gonna create some darker trees in the background. I'm gonna have some bigger ones coming up in the foreground later after this is all dry, but I'm gonna do some um, small ones in the background. So I'm actually gonna switch my brush to a size four, and I'm just gonna take more of this indigo. I might actually add a bit of black to make it really dark. And I'm just going to, on the wet background, create some lines like that. And then I'm gonna make little small horizontal lines going down those vertical ones. Okay, so it looks like these trees are in the distance, so they're a little bit out of focus. Okay, making them nice and dark. Now try not to have too much water on your brush when you do this, because if you have a lot of water and paint, it might kind of like explode out because you're painting on a wet surface. So you don't want these trees to like expand and, um, let me see if I can give you an example of what I mean. So say you already have a wet background, right? It's just a little lesson, okay? And then you have a lot of water and paint on your brush and you're trying to do these little fine lines, but you have a lot of it. Those little trees are gonna become bigger blobs. So you wanna use less water, more paint, if that makes sense. So that's why I try to use a smaller brush too. Okay, it just kind of contains that, and that's all a part of water control. So you have some that are taller, some that are shorter. And doing it on wet on wet gives it that nice blurred effect. But just use the tip of your brush for this so you don't get really, really thick lines. You want these to be nice, small little trees. Okay. like so. And try and get those little tips of the trees 
you can. And we'll actually add snow on top of some of them later. Okay, so now you are going to wait for that to completely dry. Okay, now that it's completely dry, we're gonna do some of the trees in the foreground. So I'm gonna take my brush, and again, I'm just gonna keep with this blue like indigo theme. So it's kind of like a monochromatic painting. You're only using indigo for this and maybe some white. So I'm gonna do a tree in the foreground and it's gonna be bigger because it's in the foreground, it's closer so it appears bigger than the ones in the background. So I'm just gonna do a line like that. And then with these trees, um, usually at the top of evergreen trees, the little um, pines at the top usually tend to stick up a bit. So with this, I want you to be really loose with it. Don't make it too perfect. Um, it just, when it's too perfect, it doesn't look as realistic. So just kind of randomly place them. So the closer to the top, they're kind of pointing upwards and then they start to fall. It can even be heavier on one side, you know, like trees are different, every single one of them. So you don't want it to be perfect. So basically I'm just taking the tip of my brush and I'm just going back and forth, like in different directions. Kind of like scribbling almost. Okay, I've done this before and I see people see, oh, this is what that looks like after when you add too much water. See the difference between those trees and that tree? That's what happens if you have too much water on your, on your brush. When I, sorry, when, stay on track. When I've taught the trees before, what I see people do is they'll do this line and then they go, back and forth like this. And that's more of like an abstract tree, but it doesn't look as realistic because you have these straight lines, right? And they're kind of symmetrical on both sides. The trick to making it look a bit more realistic, I'm gonna add some black to this, is you know, having it asymmetrical and not as, you know, perfect. So just kind of Move your brush around and then obviously it gets larger as it gets closer to the bottom. Okay, and you're just going out from that middle stem. You don't want to see that middle stem. You're just kind of using it as a guide. Okay. And you can always go back in and make it a little darker if you want. Okay, and then what I like to do, hold on, just darkening this, some of these things up. What I like to do is I'll take my bigger brush, some water, not a lot of water. I'm taking a lot of that excess water off by just running it across my brush, but it's a wet brush. And I kind of just run it along the bottom of the tree like this. So some of that blue bleeds down and gives it a soft little blend okay because white snow is not just pure white if you look at any picture it always has a tint of another color a really light tint so i don't know if you can see this but there's a really really light tint of blue here oh my goodness has it been like this the whole time this is what happens okay and it kind of lets it fade into this wet area. Okay, like it's nice white fluffy snow. Okay. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that blue and just drag it down a bit, like the lightest amount. Because when you take this border off, you're going to want to have a different, like a line that's different from the border. So I'm just using some of the white Oh, sorry, really, really light shade of indigo to kind of give a tint to that snow. Okay, now because I added some water here and a little light tint to that blue, I want to make sure it's completely dry before I do another tree right here. 
Um, you don't have to, you could add another little tree there, but I'm gonna add one that's closer to the foreground, kind of like half of it. So I'm just gonna wait for this to completely dry and then we'll come back. Okay, now that it's completely dry, I'm gonna do another tree. So same kind of thing, taking that white, sorry, that indigo and black kind of mix. I'm gonna do another one. This one's gonna be even closer, so it's gonna be further down on the page. Like this, okay. And again, those top branches are pointing upwards and you're just using the tip of your brush. And you know, some, some branches can be a bit more bare, can be fuller on one side. Just makes it look more realistic when it's not so perfect, you know what I mean? And so you can use this technique if you wanted to paint your own like Christmas tree, you know, in green. This is basically how to draw an evergreen tree. And by draw, I mean paint. <laughs> so I'm just using my black and indigo mixture. Okay, so you can even do it this way if you want. Draw a branch and then just draw paint, some uneven, oops, bristles coming off like that. It's very messy. Back and forth, and then some coming further down in the front. Just darkening up some of those areas. Like that, okay. So there is our other tree, like so. And again, I'm just going to take my wet brush and I'm just gonna go along the edge to have it blend out. And it just creates a really nice soft blend between that snow that's down here. So that indigo that's kind of bleeding into it is acting kind of like it's a shadow underneath the tree but it's also giving a little bit of a tinted color to the snow which is white okay so there you go just like that okay so now the next step of this is not something that you have to do um but if you wanted to add snow on top of these trees. What you're gonna need is a white ink. I'm gonna use Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. It is my absolute favorite. It will be linked below in my uh, materials that I use. Um, but I think white watercolor or gouache can work too, as long as it's opaque and you use a lot of it, okay? So I'm gonna wait for this whole thing to dry and then I will add some snow on top. Okay, so now that it's completely dry, I am going to take my white ink which looks like this inside. And I'm gonna add some water in there and I'm gonna get a nice thick cover on it. And I'm just going to add some of that white on top of parts of these trees. Water, that ah, tape is coming off, okay? Unevenly, just like the snow has fallen like so. And while it gets a little bit like um, lighter in color, like not as opaque, you can even put some snow on the back ones here. Maybe a bit lighter. Okay, just using the tip of your brush to lightly put some snow on those trees. Now, if you don't have a white ink, you could always just leave the white space. Just keep in mind when you start doing it, you're gonna need to leave that white space, right? Okay. Here 
would be in some of those like part the snow would be collecting in some of those parts that especially that are pointing up so just think of it that way when adding your snow okay like that and I don't even actually add any white to the snow I just leave it as is I might like that and then if you really want to add some snow falling you could take your brush and do that little flicky action <laughs> and have some snow lightly falling in your picture and there you go and now the fun part we get to take the tape off and reveal our beautiful painting There we go. And you can always slap this on the front of a card or, you know, just frame it in your house for the holidays. And that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Can you say bye?